sure you can hear me. If you heard, if you heard Madam Tessie, I'm sure you heard me. So let's start by showing your digital hand if you heard me. Show your digital hand, and that is a welcome sign that you heard me. Thank you. Amaka. Amaka can hear me. Daniel can hear me. Beautiful. So that is good. So let's go now to let's go to uh, the topic while I share my slide. Thank you, Zainabu Babatunde. Then um you can see, I can see so many so many names. Ambassador Wood, I'm gonna see my see my screen. See my screen. I'm glad you are there with me. Let's go to presentation. Let's go to presentation while we get to know another. While we get to know one another. Why are we here? Why are we giving up our our Friday night to study what uh, the institute has for us? Thank you for those who have sent me their, their digital hand that they can see my screen. That is very good. I have been introduced earlier. I will not do more than that. But when you receive your Galaxy Tab S3, thank you. When you receive your slide, you see more of me, of who I am. Just simple me and let's move on. I would always try to assure my, I'm sorry, I just sat near where it is not too cool. cool. Uh, some of us, when we receive the slide, we go through, please don't put this slide just as one of those slides that, or those presentations that we receive and we don't, you may have need to look at one of the slides and say, what did she even say that day? And you now see that something is very important that you need to go a long way. So I also want to reassure our adult learners that all answers are correct. All questions, there's no nonsense question, just remove the none from the nonsense and you get sense. In adult class, Baba no de fail, please be sure to ask your question, put them in the chat box. If not, if you feel that, oh, we are spending too much time, please come with your questions to, to, uh, to the physical uh, pre uh, physical induction tomorrow. We may still be online, but we'll be able to attend to them because we have more longer, longer time tomorrow. So this evening, what, why are we here? We are here to discuss developing executive presence in the workplace. We wonder why, why are we saying this? Why are we going to discuss this? Please let everyone put himself or herself on mute so that we don't get to hear uh, noises at the background. Thank you. Why are we discussing this? Why do we want to, why are we even having a pre-induction, pre-induction lecture? You see, we are here because most of us are, going for doctoral fellow, some are going for fellow, and we need to separate the men from the boys. There are 66 of us on the, on the, on the, on, on the, on the presentation. I'm sure more may join, and there'll be some tomorrow that are members and associates and graduates who get to see them. But men that are high up, or they always, also always refer to as, or oh God, the top. That's why we are discussing this. You can't have a doctoral fellow and a fellow and not be able to hold your head high out there. So thank you for giving us your Friday to learn more on how you develop executive presence in the workplace. Because by the time if somebody says you have a doctoral fellow or you are a fellow, they expect so much from us. And in all cases, most of us will be able to use this to get to a higher level of uh, in our organization. The, that next slide talks about me, that's me. And uh, let's quickly now go to what I call, what I refer to. Instead of the objective, I always refer to it as, let's unpack the agenda. What do we have for tonight? What do we have for tonight? So let's quickly look at it. First, we talk about the definition of executive presence. 
after that, we know we talk about know thyself. Some of us feel we know ourselves until we get to see some of what we are going to talk about. You say, Oh, I didn't know that about myself. You will see. Then they will also talk about this um philosophy or the, a, a model, not philosophy, no, a model that is referred to as Joe Harry Window. Joe Harry Window is a combination of one uh, industrial psychologist and another, Joseph and Harry. So they form the Joe Harry Window. We see what has that got to do with Know Thyself. Then we we'll also talk about the key steps to developing executive presence. We'll talk about the pillars, pillars of executive presence, traits of executive presence, benefits of executive presence, create personal presence, once you see that you know yourself and there is a gap and we need to know what do I need to do to be able to create that personal presence in order to get to the executive presence we're talking about this evening. Then we create the environment and connect with people. Create the environment with for others and for yourself in order to develop the executive presence, then connect with people. Without people, you will not be there. Then we talk about people management. What does that mean? Then we see... How do we develop a new mindset at the end of it all? If not, you will see what is all this about. We discuss if we have the time. If not, please, we take our discussion to tomorrow morning. Your question, write them down or type them in the chat box and we'll be able to get there. Thank you for coming this evening and thank you for your time. We are 71 now. I love this, this slide. I always start my, my presentations with this slide. Why? It's a simple truth. Simple. You are paid to produce results. Yes. Whether at executive level or at middle level or at those we call our associates. But note that it is your people who produce the results, not you, or else you'll be working in silos. Thirdly, so what do you need to do when you realize this too? that you need to produce results and it's people that help you to get the results, to produce the result. So the important thing that you need to do is now focus your energy on helping people, your people to be successful because when they're successful, you are successful. When they say, oh, this is good. They, 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 when the chips are down, it falls on your on your, on your your head first. They say, oh, oh God, you did well. This HR, you did well. Somebody, you did well. When you are in the helm of affairs, it's not people. It's not you that get the result done, uh, made or produced. It's others that help us to get there. As an executive, we need to get our people to produce results and focus our energy in assisting them to get there. So, how do you do this? When we are talking of people, people are made up of individuals, individuals that will help us to get there. So, we need to know this individual. And what who are they? One thing that we need to know about individual is one that we are made up of different species, different character, different attitude, and this is made up of behavior. So human behavior is said to be courteous, effective, and positive interaction between two or more persons. Positive, note that word. Note the word effective, note the word courteous. Because if you are not courteous, you will see the other side of the person in most cases they are usually when it comes to human behavior is they're usually two sides of a coin two sides of a coin the positive and the negative the courteous and those that are not courteous and those who are not effective so they will just leave everything there so you want to say ah this person i thought is my friend and well but no human behavior we need to know that whatever we do there should be that symbiotic beneficial relationship between us all. So we need to understand that we are individually different. And how do I relate with these people? As executive, we need to, in order to do that, the degree or the percentage of pleasure you derive from them will be based on how you relate to them. I'm sure some of us, when we discuss some, some of the, the slides tomorrow, you see or some of the issues in the presentation of tomorrow, you see that some individuals relate with you when they say, ah, our guy is good, then they will also be good to you. Our new executive is good. Our CEO is good. But when they are not, they say, if you sack me, if you are part of those that will be instrumental to getting me removed from this place, they will not add my salary to your salary. So we need to ensure that we do not, our behavior, 
our attitude to those people or the individual that we come across in the workplace. They do not show us the negative side or the inherent personality in them because you may feel, oh, they are good. But someday, somewhere, somehow, if you don't do well, they will not, they will not show you uh, the good side of them. So let's quickly look at this, this slide. I want us to uh, type in whatever you see as your answer to whatever you see on the slide. So let's look at this. Homo sapiens, how many faces can you see there? Your time starts now. Secondly, people are like irregular figures. What is that? What does that remind you of? People are like irregular figures. What does that remind you of? What does that remind you of? Someone said two faces. Somebody said you can you can see two faces, Dibia, but somebody is seeing three faces. Lovely two. Florence, Karen, uh, Martin, two, uh, three. Uh, Martin, two. Okay. Three, three, three. Those who are seeing two, they are seeing two faces, Dibia. Okay. Three faces, two, two. <laughs> three, three. Okay. Let somebody give us. Let somebody give us. People are like irregular figures. What does that remind you of? Irregular figure. I'm web. What is that? I'm or something. Amoeba. Simple. Ah, when you give me two big names, I'm not too good in English. <laughs> yes. Species amoeba. Thank you. Your time stops now. Thank you. You can do without people. Did somebody say you can do without people? Then you're going to read it with a but somebody made the AI. Samsung, I want to take you up on that. Somebody, Samsung, there's no name. He said you can do without people. Oh, did, he, did he mistakenly type you can't do without people? Or is that what he wants to type? Oh, thank you. <laughs> I was afraid. <laughs> okay, then. He's corrected himself. Thank you. Okay, that is good. Amoeba, Homo sapien. The highest I got from our response on Homo sapien is three. Three, but I will tell you four. Four, and that is how human behavior and human beings are. We are always evolving. Always evolving, especially when it comes to the area of leadership. So look at the how many noses can you see? One white one there. Did somebody, maybe somebody has got it. I said four. I really, I didn't see that. Honestly, I didn't. It's four. Ario, you will take the laurel tomorrow, okay, if you are physical. If not, I will send you something. Oh, oh, who is this? Somebody is putting something on our, on our screen. Four, exactly. How many noses can you see there? Four. Four, okay, four, okay. The white one that is protruding into the black, then the black one that is protruding into the white, then the black one that is going out and protruding into the unknown, then the in that, that black one is another nose with the mouth at the bottom that is protruding into the black. So four, thank you, Ario, for that very intelligent, others are intelligent too, answer. So let's quickly look at what we have in the chat box. Well, I will attend to that later. Chioma said four too, okay. Some people have seen four. Thank you. Yeah, you are all correct. All answers are correct. Perception. So adult class, all answers are correct. Thank you. Now, what is executive presence? You said, I said that we are going to define what executive presence is. We will not go to executive presence straight like that. Let's quickly see what is presence in the first place. Presence is hard to define, but we know it when we say it. Someone walks into a room and people step aside and say, oh, come join us. Heads turn. Not because the person is big, small, or whatever. Not in terms of physique. But you see that sometimes some of us, because of our courage, because executive presence, when we finish, you see that it's a total package of yourself coupled with what you are going to get in terms of certification. You cannot go to a place and somebody will say, you have a doctoral fellow or you have you are a fellow of an institute and eyes will not turn and say, oh, they will expect so much from you. So conversation open up to include them. 
you see some of us get to some places and say oh come join us come join us whereas some people come and they some let me use the word sheepishly go to one side of the case i don't like i don't like uh showing myself we are not saying you should show yourself but somehow you get caught and you are dragged into intelligent conversations so they are in charge of themselves and in any situation let me quickly tell you a story when we were in primary school uh, mind you i attended under the apple tree not uh, a is for apple that time it was a is for i can't remember now but i know that uh, we did not do a is for apple so in, in they are in charge in charge in the sense that like some of us as we are in old age and with all the journeys of life that we've gone through when um impromptu uh, addresses get to them i say oh mrs can you tell her? i say ah, i'm not good at giving i uh, thank you uh, whatever no be up to you be in charge and that is what executive presence is all about you don't have to be a ceo you just have that presence. You have everything. You have the charisma. You have the leadership traits. You have everything that in any situation, not you are not caught on our ways. Um, I was telling you the story of when I was in well, when I was in primary school. In those days, they would tell us that oh, today is for impromptu debate, impromptu essay, impromptu speech, and all those things. And we were, we were afraid. But eventually, I realized that. It was good for us. It was good training. So in this situation, if some of us are still like shy and you don't want to talk, please get out there. As HR personnel and with someone with a doctoral fellow uh, or a fellow of the institute, you are you should you should be in charge. So what is executive present? Why do you need it? And how do we get it? So that is what we are going to talk about. We have seen presence. You have seen presence. Then what is executive presence? Executive presence, uh, we have three legs to it. One, the ability to act decisively. You don't let, the, let it pass you by if the Lord falls on you to do it. They not only act decisively, dignity. And those quintessential elements of leadership. You see, the issue of leadership is something that we can never get tired of discussing. Even as AI has come and crawled into the world of work, we will still talk about leadership. Leadership keeps evolving like that head of homo, the homo sapiens heads that we saw. It will keep evolving. Act decisively, dignity, and those elements, quintessential, essential, good ones that are, are attributes of leaders. Then those, exec, those with executive presence work well under pressure some of us you say no 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 i'm too stressed up i cannot and there's some things that we need to put with a doctoral fellow there is no excuse with a fellow of the institute there's no excuse you need to learn to communicate clearly you need to have the confidence and anytime even if whatever you are going to say you should quickly generate ideas in your head and say yes i have a capable persona I can stand my own, I can defend whatever, and I'll be able to communicate clearly, no matter the pressure. That is the hallmark of a leader. That is the hallmark of someone with a doctoral uh, fellow of this institute, as well as a fellow of this institute. So presence is not something you are born with. Mm -mm. We learn it. There are skills that we need to learn. Pick up upskill ourselves, reskill yourself in order to get there. Habits that we need to drop that are not adding value to us. But pick those ones that we need to get there and traits and attributes that we can pick from here and there in order to ensure we work well under pressure, we communicate clearly, we have the confidence and you develop the persona. It's not being arrogant. It's not the issue of pride, but when you are called upon to do something, you are there, you are seen, and you communicate clearly. It's not a question of status symbol or a position. We have seen people, people that they have the position, but they may not be able to communicate. I found myself in some instances that when I go out with some people, they say, Mrs. Igbe, you'll be the one to talk. I say, but our guy is there. And I say, no, he says you should talk. It happened to me not too long ago. Go and in some places and say, severally. It's not about position. 
Some people develop it. Whereas some people just feel that, no, I, should, I don't have to, I don't have to bother myself. I can get people to do that for me. So what is another term for executive presence, personal presence, or leadership presence? We need to wrap personal presence and leadership presence and executive presence together. First, you need to have that personal presence, total packaging of you. You can go somewhere and uh, you are not it and you expect them to call you. They'll call someone else. This is the story of, of uh, a driver and the, and the boss that went out. The driver likes dressing well because dressing is part of it. Your appearance is part of it. You, they went out. And by the time they got to the door, though he was carrying the yoga's file and the yoga was just like walking gingerly be behind him or whatever. It was to go and sort of like clear road for the yoga. So when he got there, he said, Oga, welcome, welcome. That's the driver. So by the time he got there, because he had personal presence, he has packaged himself well. He was always calling himself pilot and not driver. So by the time he got there, they were just giving him the salute. Oga, welcome. So he, he started shaking and doing his eyes like, so they, it took them time to realize that yoga was the one at the back. So we need to, we need to, we don't just take it for granted that, oh, they know that the chief executive is coming, please. Uh, but we don't have to break the central bank in order to do that. Okay. But then leadership presence comes after personal presence. You need to learn the skills of being a leader. And the executive presence is at the topmost is the top top of the pyramid. So the three will uh, intertwine in order for us to get there. Personal presence. I've seen some executive, I've seen some, some people, middle level that are aspiring to be executive. When they, they're going out, their clothes are rumpled and you tell them, you say, ah, don't worry, it will soon, it, by the time I get to the place, it will to straighten out. For goodness sake, I'm crying out loud. Never be caught be a doctoral fellow of this institute and not getting well packaged. Then the basic concept is that your demeanor and actions leave the impression on others that you are a true leader. Whatever you say, the way you carry yourself will show that this person is worthy to be respected and to be followed. So whatever comes out of your mouth, people will just want to take the words out of your mouth and take it and run with it. And that is what executive presence is. So most importantly, executive presence is a skill that we can learn, okay? There are some other traits that we can pick up here and there. They will only assist us to get to that executive presence that we are talking about. That means it's something you can cultivate or build like habits. So now we go to know thyself. How do I know myself? How? It is said that those it's not those who don't know how to use the computer or those who don't know much about AI are the illiterate of this century or those who know, don't know how to use the Android. The Android itself is also a mini computer. It is not all those. It is that person who is not willing to take the bold step to know that I am deficient in this area. I need to move forward. So what do you need to do? Once you, you know that you do not know, that is the beginning of wisdom. Once you know that you do not know, that you need to acquire more, that is the willingness that we are talking about. The willingness to take that bold step. And that is why we are here this evening. So you need to understand your leadership style. Is my leadership style good enough? You need to understand your emotional state. And what is that emotional state? Emotional state is our ability to remember and know that others are human beings like us. In order to, for us to be able to know that one, we need to be in charge of our emotions at any point in time. Not that we will get people to say to now say, oh, uh, it, it was the one that made me to do it. No, it was because, no. What executive president wants you to learn today is that manage your emotional intelligence. I will tell you a quick story. The story goes like this. It happened, it's not fabulous. One man, he went to the filling station. He went to uh, fill his, uh, his vehicle in his suit and everything. So, you know, the, all these big cars, Lexus and everything. Now. So he got to the filling station. He did whatever he needed. And he wanted to just go in and get his car out of the pump head. This downfall, all of us know how downfall drivers and their conductors behave in Lagos. Zoom, 
blocked Oga and his Nexus. The Oga looked in his suit and said, do you know who I am? Can you move this, your rickety rubbish, no motto out of here? And the Danfo did not even say anything. The Danfo driver did not even say anything. It was his conductor that came out with his chest like this. Gould and said, Oga, do you know who you are talking to? That is my Oga. That is your motto from here. Uh -uh. So because the man knows the aspect of what you said before, emotional management, you just enter this can say, you just... You meet me at my level today. If not, I will have dealt with you. He knew that if that conductor held him by his throat with his tie, then the, 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 it will not be an easy story anymore. So he just instead of him moving forward, he was now the one that reversed and moved to another. Because when you are dealing with certain people, and remember we said human beings, individuals, we need to manage ourselves. And it's not only out there. Even in the boardroom, we need to learn to manage people and know that we should be willing to change some of those things that are not adding value to us. So what do we need to do? We need to learn to understand ourselves. So what, what is the first step? The first step is once you understand yourself, you'll be able to understand others. You'll know how to relate with them. It is not a matter of treat others as you want them to treat you. Treat them the way they want to be treated and also how you want to be treated as well. So know Ask yourself some salient questions. What kind of leader am I? Am I the one that helps people to solve problems? Should my desk be the last, what we always call the last bus stop for anybody that when the person comes not happy to me, by the time the person is leaving, the person is leaving happier. A leader who helps people get along. How do others see me? What are my goals and purpose and expectations in working in a particular team? Tomorrow we'll talk about team working, not team building now, team working. How do you manage people in your team? We'll just touch it briefly because it's a big topic on its own. So now let's quickly look at what we call the Joe Harry window. It's also still part of know thyself. Know yourself. If you don't know yourself, then you will not be able to know others. Okay, you will not be able to understand others. So look at this. We have four boxes there. Four boxes. One on top of known or no known there, we have the self. Self. Then on the y axis, we have what others. And the two are divided to known and unknown. The first box is known and known. That known is no self, known others. Two, unknown self, then known others. Three, known self and unknown others. Four, unknown self, then unknown others. So let's break it down in the next slide. And you see, how do we get this done? Known and known. One is known self. The other one is known others. This is what we call the free area, the public area where people watch what you don't hide anything from anybody there. People know so much about you and you know that much about yourself. So known self, known to you and known to others, the public area, area of free activity where people will say, oh, Mrs. Igbe, like my, uh, the brief that was read about me, everybody knows that. I know that about myself. That's, is the first box, the first box. So the second one, unknown to me and known to others. Blind self, blind area, blind spot. What is known about a person by others in a group but unknown to the person himself? I will close this too by giving you an example of myself. I was in a group. And one of our group members said, Mrs. B, I've known you for some years now. Do you know that you are a calculated risk taker? I took a back seat and I said, what? What do you mean by that? And he broke it down. Honestly, from that day, I started knowing that about myself. 
but I didn't know that I had that. And I didn't know that someone was studying me or some people were studying me. From that day till today, I started making conscious efforts to say, is it true that I do this? Is it true that I do that? So that part has no, was not known to me before until that person drew it out. I drew it out for me and I was glad he did. Then the third one, we are still talking about know thyself. Remember we said Joe Harry were two philosophers, uh, two sorry, industrial psychologists, not philosopher now, industrial psychologists, Joseph and Harry. You can Google them later and see the full names. Uh, Joe Harry, Joe was Joseph, Harry was the Harry double R Y, but they put it to Joe Harry window. The third box is known and unknown. That is what you call the avoided area. I know what is known to others, but kept hidden from. Or, uh, what is known to ourselves, sorry, what is known to ourselves, because the first part is known to me, but unknown to others. Known to me, but unknown to others. I'll give you an example. It's not that I'm like that too, because if you see something good, don't say that means annihilate yourself. Let's take an example. You put me in the place of authority and there's good money. And you said, ah, Mrs. B, we put it there because we know that ah, any public money you will not touch. I said, oh, sure. But inside of me, I say, a couple of million will help me in the future. We better my lot and whatever. It's known to me that, ah, can I resist the pep of the office? Can I resist, you know? But inside of me, it's known to me that... I can, not that I will steal, I will not steal, but I can use it to my own advantage. Okay? But people feel, oh, she's good. She will not touch it. That is an example of what is known inside of you that I can do it, you as yourself, not others. But others don't know. Eh? Others don't know. Nobody has given me a message. I can see four faces now. Uh oh, no. So, uh, Joe Harry is divided into four. Yes, I said that the open area and whatever. Timothy Biron, okay, yes, please. That's what we're talking about. Thank you. That's what we're talking about. Timothy Ibiron, okay, that's what we're talking about. Then the, that is inside of me. I know I can do it, but to others, they believe that I can't. So it's unknown to them. Then the fourth, the fourth uh box or the fourth, fourth part of the quadrangle is unknown to me and unknown to others. Let's take this as, let's take a practical example. There's fire outbreak. All of us were in the compound and the perimeter fence is six foot high. Ah, it's a matter of survival load. So what did I do? With my age, before you, someone would say fire, fire, fire. Mrs. Igbe has scaled the six, six, uh, the six foot fence. And I was the other side before, even those who were younger, uh, they, they, before they would meet me out there. And we all eventually escaped the fire. And they said, wow, madam, we never knew you could you could do Ben Johnson or you could even jump the fence like that. I said, honestly, me too. I did not know I could do that. And I said, oh, we didn't know you do that. I said, I did not know myself. So what happens? It's unknown to me. It's unknown to them. So that is how we get to know who you are, what you can do. Have a soul search and see. Do what we call the SWOT analysis of self and see what are those areas that I need to work on. Do I need to, like someone said when we talked about this Joe Harry window, the person said it is better, like unknown and unknown, that that is your ace. Don't leave yourself out, out there like they do on Facebook that there are some things that you need to hold on to so that people will not know everything about you. It's up to you to decide. But for whatever it is, use it to do a soul search and see what I need to do to get there. So that you'll be able to make people to deliver results. So that you may assist, not make them, you assist them to deliver results to the advantage of the organization. So leadership, you know, we said quintessential elements of leadership. Leadership, as I said before, is a topic that we can never, ever finish discussing. It's a topic that is always evolving, 
always evolving. So why is this topic so hot? Because some people have said that good leaders today appear to be endangered species. Does it mean most of us that we call ourselves leaders, we are not good? That we, good leaders are going into extinction, ah, endangered, but we will continue to evolve. So it depends on what you consider yourself to be. Me, I'm a good leader. So we are, I'm not an endangered species because I know there are some people that are still better than me that are out there. So what do we need to do? What, as a leader, what do we need to do? What we need to do is look at what we have to do to manage ourselves and others in the C-suite. And this is basically how to, how to do something, why to, and what to. This talks about, basically about our strategic skills. You see, I always tell people, I say, I'm not a strategist. I don't know anything about strategy. But the thing I know is that I use the six W's and the H to get myself moving from one spot to the other, moving to achieve results and to ensure that people are there for us. Now, there's a question I'm going to throw to us and your time starts immediately after the question. Can you type <clears throat> the six W's and H that I use for, we were taught in the primary school, if we're not taught in the primary school, we're talking in the secondary school. If not, some of us know it. There are three already on the slide. So I want the remaining four W's. The H is already out there. Your time starts now. Your time starts now. The first person will get something. We are 78 on this call. I thought somebody will quickly type. Even if it is the first one you will type, don't type why and what again. Yes, somebody is here. Some people are here. Oh, lovely. Why, what, where? Daniel, thank you. How? So we're giving us three. Somebody has given us why. Why is already there already. When? Beautiful. Why, when, what, who, where? Lovely. That is fine. Good. Somebody, we have not mentioned something. Yes. How? How is there already? Thank you. We are, we are missing out one, two. We are missing out two. When is there already? Somebody has given us where is there. Yes, lovely whom? Then, then, who? Well, yes, we, I can see who now. Somebody mentioned who and who. These are what we need to. Who will get the job done? When will we get the job done? Why do we want to do this job? What do we need to do? How do we get it? These are the ways strategists think. You need to they talk about blue ocean strategy, red ocean strategy, or whatever strategy, but break everything down. It will all of them will come down to who, what, where, when, who, how, everything. And you will see that strategy simply put is all these six. Thank you very much for those who get. And these are what we use in the C-suite to be able to manage our leadership ability. And we will get there and get people to deliver results. Thank you for participating in that. Then, talking about leadership, <sighs> you see that not everyone is a born leader, but everyone develops leadership skills and everyone can benefit from using them. So if you want to be a successful leader, develop an executive presence is very essential. See that cartoon. When a child is delivered in the in the delivery ward or room or whatever, they say we should not say labor room anymore. In the in the, in the delivery room, at that point, do we say, "Hey, we got a leader"? Do not say, "I told you." Even Prince Charles, that was born with silver spoon in his mouth, you see that he's still walking in the shadow of the the, 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 late, the late mother. We knew that he was going to be the next king when he was born. But did he have, or does he have, the leadership, quintessential essence of leadership? He's just still working. Uh, maybe he's still learning the ropes. We don't know. But for whatever it is, what? When a child is born, we do not get to say, this is a leader. Maybe those in those days, so I don't know, but it is not 
in all situations that you say you can say yes the person is hair apparent the person is born in the blue blood the person is born with silver spoon but not as a leader if you have a spirit of hindsight look at some of the leaders we've had in nigeria children of nobody that became somebody they became leaders in this country so we need to look at it it's not everybody that is born a leader but you can develop it Thank you. Somebody, Chine Dung Ezekiel, say, following the lecture. Thank you very much. So we need to look at it. Some of us find ourselves in there and we need to develop this. It's a skill that all of us can develop. Look at all this. <laughs> yeah. Margaret Thatcher, my great uncle, uh, Martin Luther King Jr., my great grand uncle, uh, you see, uh, Mandela, all of them. My spiritual uh, mother, Teresa, all of them, Reagan, and all these people, children of nobody that became somebody. So what did they do? They were inspired by others and also left inspiration for others. So if your action inspires others to dream more, learn more, do more, and become more, you are a leader in your own corner. And that is why you are talking of executive presence. You need to develop the personal presence, Personal presence, thank you for techno. Personal presence, you need to develop that. Take that to take the personal presence to the leadership presence. From there, you develop the executive presence. Don't let anybody shortchange you because you paid so much to get this lecture and you have given up your Friday night to be able to sit down here in one hour or one and a half hours to listen to this. So, that is why we are here. Be a leader. Leave some inspiration for others uh, because you were inspired by others and you have to be a good leader. So what are those behaviors that define strong, not just any executive, but the strong one? One, you need to manage your emotional intelligence. I gave you the example of the man that do you know who I am. Then public speaking. Hmm. Public speaking is what some of us, thank you, this public speaking is what some of us have issues with. Honestly, this person speaking with you here, I used to have issues until one day I was inspired by my mom and that opened up what my public speaking ability and I learned from others. And that is the essence why we are here. We will be uh, enrolled in our um, Telegram group and there you can network. Public speaking, you should not be caught unawares. Okay, that is why our mind, we should have a broad mind, be reading, be getting to know. Like, let me give you an example. Hmm. AI, everybody has been talking and afraid of AI. And I said, uh, my, uh, my institute, uh, my other institute um, conference, we just finished in August. We, we brought in people that are knowledgeable in AI. And they spoke to us. Before then, I wasn't afraid of AI. People are afraid that AI AI will take our job, especially the HR and training uh, L&D professional. We thought that AI, uh, so we, we, we thought AI, we, we, some of us are still thinking like that, that AI will get our job. Yesterday, I listened to a, a, a webinar from outside of the country. I got more encouraged that AI will not take my job because like <laughs> the native people, <laughs> Thank you. The native people will always say that when you see a masquerade, don't even go there. Let's even go to um, what's the name of this? Things fall apart. Chinu Achebe said that when the masquerade were dancing at the arena, you remember that his um his neighbor had a bad leg or something on the leg. Say ah, that is Okoko's neighbor dancing in the arena. So that means behind every masquerade, there is a human being. It's not spirit from outside. So behind each AI, behind all AIs, there will always be human being that will feed the AI with whatever. So whatever it is, public speaking, go online, see what you can do. Okay. When when I was learning how to do public speaking, you know what someone told me? One of the things I I. He said, you know some things, but for you to do it, I said, I want to do it better than I'm doing. He said, hmm. first thing, think of the most interesting or the, 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 the happiest day of your life. And that spirit will lift you. 
Is it the day you had your first child? The day you got your certificate, your first degree? The day you did something, the happiest moment in your life that you experienced, not that when you were born or whatever. No, something you experienced yourself. It will help our public speaking. Honestly, it will. It will lift you up. When we have butterfly in our stomach, it will not, it will not affect us. You just be speaking fluently, very well, with the spirit of hindsight ex uh, uh, and experience, you will get there. So communicate to connect. Don't communicate and communicate to yourself. Let people get to know and go away with something. The video and the video and the slides will be available to us. We are recording. Let people connect with whatever we are doing and you will get there. Okay? <laughs> Galliophobia, yeah? <laughs> Gallery, yes. So, Quiet confidence, don't, don't make too much noise. You will get there. Then integrity, whatever you say, let it be your bond. You will let your word be your bond. When you are not up to it, just make sure that you have prepared yourself for whatever you are going to talk about. Okay, even if it is impromptu, please just be ready to say something will go away, something of value that they will go away with. Then develop a signature style. Let people know you for good things. Let people know that Integrity is key. Yes, I do. I believe that as well. It 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 goes into 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 trust and loyalty and all of that. So develop a signature style that people will get to know that whatever you say, they don't have to go to the window when you tell them good morning, and they will now go to check whether it's morning or afternoon or night. So a signature style of loyalty, integrity, and trust. So learn to be a good leader. It is a skill that anyone can learn. If you have any question that will not take us off what we are saying, you can type into the box. So these are the seven key steps to build and enhance your own executive presence. Have a vision and articulate it. That is how you can inspire people to get there. Understand how others experience you. You know, I used to have a boss who would say that, oh, he tries to test the waters of what people are talking about him. He engages his driver in conversation when they are going home. Not that he wants him to do tafia or tatafu or whatever, but he'll just engage him and like oh, off the curve and you will now get the pulse of what his associates, his middle level staff, or even some people are talking about, you know, when they sit as drivers, they say, my God, this one. So some of this is what lets others understand others' experience. You don't have to discuss with your driver. You have other ways in which you can get to know how, others experience you. Oh no, build your communication skills. We'll be talking about that and communication, what the language, what you say, how you listen and uh, how you package everything. Even writing, writing is part of it, okay? How do you comprehend? Comprehension is part of communication. We need to get there. So become an excellent listener. Listen. It is said that that is why God gave us two ears so that we can hear more and one mouth so that we can talk less and i also want to add this to you that listening is an intellectual ability we are while hearing is a biological function because if a child does not hear say and the child does not respond and you do that again then that child has issue with hearing but as an adult that you know you have been hearing all these years but you you are bad at listening because some of us, when when um, people are talking, before they get to us, say, ah, you just break the line of communication. And some of them immediately you blame the line and say, what was I saying, sir? That means you are not a good listener. Hear them out. Hear them out before you punctuate what they're saying so that you'll be able to get to know as an executive, learn to listen. Because the good thing is yet to come. The good thing is yet to come. Don't punctuate. Even if the person is saying nonsense, keep the non and listen to the sense of what he's saying. So cultivate your network and build political savvy environment. You need network. Your network is your net worth. You wonder, most of us, we always get annoyed with them in Abuja. See, they're always circulating, you know, recycling themselves, recycling themselves. You, you, when you, it's only those you can trust that you work with. So your network, I'm not supporting that why they recycle themselves because me too, I want to go there. So, but how would your network assist you to get there? 
You need to connect with people. Build political survey. How survey environment. Some of us, when we are in the workplace, and as executives say, no, 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 I don't pay up office politics. Please pay office politics. So play office politics. So hmm. it's not the politics of PDP, APC, and APM, and all of them. But office politics need to be played. What you would do, learn to ride the tiger but don't end up in the belly of the tiger. Learn to uh, ride the waves. Learn to ride the waves and you will get there. And you will get there. So what you do is that even at home, we play politics. Even at home, amongst our children, but we try not to show it. Build your network. What you also do, Cultivate a political survey environment. Ride the tiger, but don't end up in the belly of the tiger. Learn to work under stress. We mentioned that. Yes, I say it again, ma. Politic office, politics in the office need to be played. Yes, it will help you. It's part of cultivating your network. Learn to operate effectively under stress. There are some stress that help us to achieve. There are some stress that are stressors and they do what they kill us. So they kill us. But what we need to do is to learn to manage your stress. Okay? Learn to manage your stress. Make sure your appearance is not a distraction. As I said before, as I said before, thank you, sir. As I said before, your appearance, you do have to break the central bank in order to ensure that your appearance is right. But make sure that you get, get it right. Get it right because it, it has to do with executive presence has to do with the total packaging, how you say it, what you do, how you act, and all. So now there are three pillars of executive presence: how you act, okay, how you communicate, okay, how you communicate. Your communication is very important. You don't have to speak Queen's English. Oh no, you know, not you need to speak the Queen's English because we wouldn't want you to do or what my friends would call, or when we were in secondary school, what we call Tian Tian Tian. But what we want you to do is that make sure you speak the correct English. You don't have to have the Queen's uh you don't have to have the Queen's uh you don't have to have the Queen's intonation, the, the English intonation, but just make sure your appearance is good and you communicate well. So communicate well. Listen, listening is part of it. Remember, you should listen more and talk less. So authentically connect with others, motivate them. Okay, thank you, sir. Or thank you, ma'am. You need to con communicate, motivate them and inspire them to a common goal. What do you want to achieve? We want this organization to go from, to grow in leaps and bounds. That is why you are executive. That is why you are here. Because if you do not get anything out of this lecture or out of why we are here tonight, removing the boys from the men, the boys are tomorrow. Boys, boys in Koto are tomorrow. We are the men. We are here to ensure we get value for whatever. It is very important. Thank you for that. So there are eight traits of executive presence, starting with confidence. Remember we said that when you walk in, people just say, can you join us? But if you are not it, Nobody will, they will just say, welcome, and they move. Confidence is man. Okay? When they now get to know you in their network, they will now talk of trustworthiness. Are you someone that they can trust? Are you relatable? Can they relate with you? Okay? Your composure in anything and whatever you do is very important. Be transparent. And that is what we talk about, the the, 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 the Joe Harry, the Joe Harry window. What do they know about you? How far do they know you? How, what is the percentage of yourself that you put out there? Transparency and authenticity. You need to be authentic in whatever you are doing. Be there. When it, you are not there for them, make sure that you bring out something they'll be able to uh, get. Thank you, sir. Or they, I mean, thank you, sir. Then conciseness. Conciseness is just, uh, don't speak too much grammar. When you are talking, don't let people go and look for dictionary. Simple, straight, your style should be yours and that is what executive presence is all about don't be like uh, anybody that man that was in the national assembly that whatever he said instead of him to communicate people will start laughing or people will start looking at their uh, at their 
uh, what do they call that? They had uh, the phones to get the meaning of what he's saying. Simple, straight, your style, everything about you should be simple, concise, and show charisma in whatever you do. What are the benefits of executive presence? Be present. Not that people are talking, all of us now, even in church, even at mosque, people, when the, the worst is going on, when the homily or the, the sermon is going on, some people are busy pressing. That means they are not there. As an executive, be present. Put your phone on silence. Put your phone on vibration. If it's, if you take a look at it like that and there's something that you need to look at, then you you just take excuse and say, let me quickly attend. But if not, listen, be there in person. And what it, don't be like what we say, um, what do you call this people now? Um, presenteeism and uh, absenteeism. Yes, presenteeism and absenteeism. When you are absent, you are absent. But when you are when you got you you displaying what we call presenteeism, you are there. What we what my friends will call is coming. You are there. But your body is there, but your soul is out there. So you are not listening. You say, hey, what did you say? No, as an executive, be present also. Even if this person is saying nonsense, hold on to the non and listen to the sense, as you said. Be present, act, act, whatever. Because whatever you, you do and you don't act, you don't put action, even to what we are talking about today and tomorrow, you, will, you are not there. So we need to be able to get it done. Empathize. Feel for others. Feel for others. And thank you. Feel for others. Empathize is different from sympathy. Empathize with them. Feel for them. Put yourself in their shoes and see how it hurts. Okay? Empathize. And once only showing it, you express it. You show emotion. You show that, yes, I, I trust you because I know, even if I'm not experiencing it, I have family members that are going through that okay is very important <laughs> no ma so what all the, what we have listed now five they will give us the results on the right hand side better employee morale lower turnover rates and some people you wonder how say well how how did you find yourself staying 35 years in service 35 years and 60 years because you just believe in that organization you believe that you have you want to add something to it you will not move like the new like the gen set but the, uh, this can we have at the end of yes we are going to have the slides we are we are and the and the recording i think so lower turnover rates higher productivity rates people will be there they will be there okay then awareness of necessary changes and that is executive present we need to be able to know that make them realize that Change will come, but when it comes, how do we, or how are we preparing for it? This is part of executive presence. Carry your people along, demonstrate passion. Think both short-term and long-term, in the short-term and in the long-term. How long are we going to be in this situation? What is, what, 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 what we call the, uh, the low-hanging fruit? How can we benefit from it? Yes, soft copy of this. Yes, you are going to have the soft copy. Yes, be decisive in your policy making, and that is the the the, the issue with HR. You see, HR, we find ourselves in the boardroom. We are part of the policy makers, but unfortunately for us as HR, we have the uh, the, the onus rests on us to go and ensure that that policy is implemented in the organization. So when they, because most of the policies are, are for the employees and we are part of the employees, but we need to, yeah. So we need to, we need to ensure that the, whatever policy that we get there is also something that will be able to, so we'll be able to work with them, part of the think tank in the organization and ensure that policy decisions and how do we make them, how do we implement them, they rest on us. So let them accept change. Let us be there for them. Because one thing about HR is that when we are facing the, the employees, we are back in management. And when we are facing management, we are back in the employees. So how do we manage this role? How do you manage this role in, in the organization? So executive presence plays a major role 
in our in our success in the workplace in the workplace I, the institute will send us the soft copy by tomorrow please so how do we manage this all important rule okay so we have to be uh, uh, very articulate and know how we manage the organization in terms of the management in terms of the uh, the employees in the workplace so uh, one of them is by uh, one of them is by managing our emotional intelligence anywhere you get any book on emotional intelligence please go ahead and read it the day i found out uh, about uh that is for HR to strike a balance between organization and employee, between management and employees. Okay, unless you consider organization as management, no problems, you are right. So wherever you get anything on emotional intelligence, please read it. You will not regret reading that because the first day I came across it, I found that at a conference and I bought it or I won the book or something. Since that day, anyway, I see anything on emotional intelligence, even if it's online, I just get to see or skim through and see what he's talking about. It has changed a little, does not change a little anyhow, but for whatever it is, just being on top of the game in terms of your emotion. Nobody will get you annoyed unless you allow that person to, okay? So ultimately, if you define who you are and it give you a reward of fulfillment in whatever you do, and it will get your people to deliver results. So how do you now manage? Remember we said personal presence, executive presence, and leadership presence. Let's quickly look at leadership and executive presence. We said that your position allows you to get allows you to perform roles, roles and function as a leader. But your presence will determine how effective you will be as that leader. Because your, it's your executive presence, because you know, we said it's a total package of you that will make you to succeed in that position. So, in presence is inferred upon you. How? How do you talk inference? Do you know? Immediately you come out and say, mm, I have a doctorate fellow. I am a doctorate fellow of uh, CI HRM. I'm a fellow of. People will say, hmm, they will already judge you. They already conclude that whatever you are going to say should have sense, not sense, not, not sense. So there should be something out there coming from you. That's why we talk about communication. That's why we talk about emotional intelligence. That's why we talk about your charisma. That's why we talk about those eight traits. So people are already concluding. People are already concluding because you can't, let's say, parade in quotes your certificate and you can't live up to it you can't work with it work with it in the sense that your attitude your whatever is not it as an with an with executive present you are just there dishing it out everything good about you so people are already concluding that this person has a dynamic presence okay and that makes them makes others to want to follow you as a leader it's not just a position. It's something that whatever you are in terms of your presence is what will make them to follow you as a leader. It also assists you to succeed in that position as a leader. So you to affect the performance of people and affect your performance, what you do and what others do. Presence is who you are, the totality of you, and it affects profit, profitability of the team that you are working in. Now, how do we now define your personal executive presence? One, have a positive mindset. Consider your habits and your background. As we said before, do a SWOT analysis of self. If you see that there's something missing, go for it. Work on it so that you add value to your life. Practice your speaking skills. Because the way we think is the way we talk and is the way we write. So practice your speaking skills. And if there's anything, redirect your focus. If there is more that you cannot do by yourself, ask for support. And that support is what you have on the other side or on the, on the, on the right hand side of the screen. When you observe others, is this the type of person that I want? Learn from those you hold in high regard. How can I get there? Because you cannot just say, I'm an executive. 
like what Shoyinka said in one of his uh, books, he said, a tiger does not proclaim his territory, though. A tiger, once you see a tiger, you're not going, oh, I'm a tiger, oh, I'm a tiger. No, you cannot. Immediately people see tiger, they know that tiger is coming. Unless you are a paper tiger that cannot roar, that cannot roar, that is when you will now, that is when you will now know that this person is not a tiger, but a paper tiger that cannot draw. So learn to learn from those, learn from those you hold in high regard, use body language, invest in learning tools. That is why we are here. Join the group. That is why we are here. Get a coach. Work on your network. That is why we are here. By the time, by tomorrow, when we are done, you will join, you join our telegraph group and the telegram group or telegraph. You join them and you'll be able to network. So your personal presence is very important, very important. The issue of presence and personal presence came into being in 2014. It's 2014, I think. And that is when people started, you see, so we need to work on our presence in order to get there. We need to work on it in order to be able to make an impact, in order to... Timitayo, <laughs> we talk after now. Timitayo, we talk after now. Okay, so we need to be able to look at it and see what can we do to get there. Personal presence is something that came up in the in the course of people researching uh, the workplace, the people researching how you can manage people in the workplace, how you can manage your team member. So personal presence is, involves a genuine character. It has to do with relationship. Who do you relate with? How you are? What, how you present yourself? how you act and how you manage others in relationship. So in essence, executive presence is the level of your ability to lead a group. All what we are getting now is not for you alone. It's for you to move yourself forward in order to put yourself in that exalted position that you already found yourself. So what do you do? It is measured by their likelihood to follow you and your direction and how you are viewed across the, the, the group. So it's very important that we get there. So let's quickly look at, okay, let's look at what do we do? How how, we decide, how do we now develop our capability? How do we build our capability? And how does it look like? In the future is about nurturing yourself, nurturing yourself in order to nurture others. Leadership skills is for everyone I and mean, in everyone. You can develop it. Okay, build on it. Whatever you notice that is not there, fill in the gap and get there. Develop an enabling environment. You mentioned that works flexibility and for change. You are not cast in stone. We are not cast in stone. We can start it now. So where do we start? And how does it start? It starts with the man in the mirror. When you look in the mirror, whom do you see? You see yourself. But if you see someone else, please, it's not juju. It's not juju. You are not being truthful to yourself. You are not looking at yourself that you could be the bottleneck or you could be the neck of the bottle. Do we need to shorten the bo bottleneck, uh, the, the neck of the bottle, or we remove the bottleneck? So which one are you? So it starts, where does it start? In the classroom? In the workplace? Change your leadership attitude and behavior and quality and stay ahead of the game. Stay ahead of the game. Okay, so what do you do? How do you master executive presence? You need to develop what you call trust-based relationship. Your network should be trust-based. If you cannot trust somebody in the dark, then you cannot, you are not there. Trust-based relationship. Believe that if somebody tells you to jump, you are ready for okay you when somebody tells you to jump you believe that the person has your interest and the interest of the organization at heart Be, remember that you have to develop and engage you and empower your team tomorrow we are going to talk about engagement and empowerment and you see how that has helped people to develop and develop their organization and their immediate environment so you also have to inspire remember one of what we said as uh, leaders is that you inspire others to dream you inspire them to achieve and they'll be able to get that. That makes you to be a leader. Some people get tired in the course of, of uh, discussing with others and you get, and they don't want to go on. So in all of this, uh, the first one that we said was that develop 
a trust-based relationship. Trust is very important in what we do. Okay, when somebody asks you a question, how what what do you mean by you trust this person? You just pick any of this or more of this or any more anything out of here. Oh, the person is person of interest. Respect us, is honest, is fair. Oh, he, he takes service above self. Okay, he's kind, he contributes. These are all the things, these are all what you look for when you say you trust someone. You trust the person and you are happy that the person is there. How do you get it? gather an effective team? Uh, in most cases, it's not us that get teams. We, we find ourselves working into teams, leading teams, or being part of team members. It's not we it's, in all cases, we don't have the luxury of picking our team members. We just find them there and it's up to you now as a leader to be able to manage them, manage your team members across board and see whether they are there to ensure that the job is done or not. So trust-based relationship, trust-based relationship. And that is the base of the, the basis of our network. So let's quickly take this small story from or based on trust. Trust is a very important factor for all relationships. When trust is broken, it is the end of the relationship. Lack of trust leads to suspicion. Suspicion generates anger. Anger causes enmity. Enmity may result in separation. A telephone operator told me that one day she received a phone call. She answered public utilities board. There was silence. She repeated PUB. There was still no answer. Okay. She was going to cut the, off the line. She heard the lady's voice. Oh. This is PUB. Sorry, I got a number from my husband's pocket. Well, I did not, I do not know whose number it is without mutual, mutual trust. Just imagine what will happen to the couple if the telephone operator just answered, or operator answered just hello instead of PUB. As simple as that. So trust will show the, your character, show how caring you are and how competent you are in the course of everything. Before we end, let us remember. What do we want to remember? Remember the following. Yes, you get the lecture material in, uh, in uh, from the institute. You get it. You. Let us remember the following. You are different. All individuals are different. We evolve like what we saw in the amoeba. See all the green, you are different, red. So what makes you to be different? So you are different to make the difference. So what do you do? So the difference is you. Back to you again. You are different to make the difference. So the difference is you as an executive with executive presence. Be different so that people will mark you for who you are and what you're doing. So remember, as we said before, success and people. Everyone who succeeds does so through the relationship with people. Remember, your people make you to be successful. The first slide. Nothing in this world was ever created, built, produced, amassed, fostered, distributed, or utilized without the support of other people. If you do not use your network well, your net worth will not be there, and you need people to get there. Great people will help you, you support you whenever you get there. And success will not come when you are in a silo. So remember, we need to share power and recognition. So what do you need to do then? Lead by making others powerful, making others powerful. And that is, <laughs> thank you. Thank you, engineer. So you need to make others powerful. That is why we are going to talk about engagement and empowerment tomorrow. So what do we do with this uh, sharing power? Use what we call as a model that we call high performance development model, high performance development model, and it's uh, broken down into eight. Yes, I'll give you my name. Thank you. I'll give you my name at the end of it all. The high performance development model. How do you do personal mastery? Know yourself. What are those technical skills? All what we have been talking about is not about uh, the technical skills of uh, screws, spanners, and whatever. Those human personal skills that you call technical in the course of your job. 
interpersonal effectiveness. We need to ensure that people are there. Okay, less strife in the workplace. We get the job done. Customer service or customer centric, internal and external. Okay, yeah, that is why the the native people have a saying that where words we get to, it will take a hundred years for leg to get there. Don't even think of telephone or whatever. The word of mouth will go, will precede you before you get there. So flexibility and adaptability. Remember, creative thinking, system thinking, organizational stewardship, and you'll be able to get there. Because there is no better time to take action on the previous and current consideration. Previous one that are gone, current one, and forward. What do we do moving forward? So we need to get there too. Reinforce what works for you and your team. Scale up our approaches to ensuring that people get there. And trench a credible culture because it's the culture that external customers will get to know whether you are there or not. Upskill ourselves. And that is why we are here. Promote values that leave a legacy. How will people remember you? I was here. As what? What impact did you leave? behind so high performance development model provides the foundation for leading by example and creating a motivation motivating workplace a, an inspirational workplace that will help people to get there so what do we do in order to succeed we need to use what we call the people management acronym focus on 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 the skills of people thank you so much mr Quara. or oh, yeah use what you call the people model the sorry people model acronym so you need to succeed with people with employees and other people that are engaged in ensuring that we get there so what do we do people now becomes an acronym for professionalism empathy optimism partnering okay but thank you so much uh partnering loyalty engagement and empowerment we're going to talk about that tomorrow so you now see that this is people management if you cannot use that they are too long what do you do there are six six um things that we need to or skills that we need to carry on there why not go for the four simple one fish the fish model feel for others involve others speak to and see others point of view that shows empathy that shows that you are there for them. That shows that, oh, you listen, hear them out. That is the fish model because it has to do with people management. Remember when we started people management, manage people. Remember, the rich also cry. The blood that runs in your vein runs in their vein. And we need to develop a new mindset to ensure that people deliver so that they don't run away from the organization. Because some people will say, when you send me parking from this place, take my job so what do we need to do as hr watch them grow or see them go so what do we need to do train them mentor them counsel them coach them in order to close the performance or skills gap because nowadays we don't wait for the almighty annual performance we talk about performance management keep managing them until you get to that show of where you want them to deliver so and you'll be able to retain them talent management retain them for what for business success and that is the that is the new mindset i want to go with manage your people and they will deliver finally as executive with executive presence stand up to be seen because when you stand up people say oh yeah you must have something good to say with a doctoral fellow and a fellow of this institute they will see you and by the time they finish reading your citation Oh, they want to listen. Talk to be heard. And when you are done, sit to be noticed. And the ovation will continue. They'll say, that was good. Not that they'll flatter you, but you too will know that you have done something well. All this at the essence of executive presence. For life isn't about finding yourself alone. Life is about creating and recreating yourself. That is just it. Don't just find yourself continue recreating and creating your recreate and recreate yourself so you need to reinvent yourself you require focusing around what you and learning to capture the essence of observation and what you can transfer as new 
skill set, what you need to do in order to get what you want out of the workplace. It consists of showing a better way, better, a better way by example. People are watching you. By next week, when you get your certificate and everything, and you add that doctor to your name, or you add fellow to your name, say fellow F, whatever that you put today, fellow of Chartered Institute of HRM, CIHRM, sorry, what are you worth that? Are you worth that leader? Are you worth that executive? So it is time for a new generation of leadership. We are not endangered species to cope with new problems and new opportunities. But there's a new world to be won. And that was said by J.F. Kennedy, once president of the U.S. I want us to take this. Note that, as we have said all of this, this was a new, by Skillable. Skillable is one of the um, organizations that talk about employees and what you can do to retain talent in the workplace. They said in a recent, um, I think as recent as this year or late last year, that 70% of employees report that they don't have mastery of the skills needed for their jobs. What are we doing? HR, excuse me, HR, what are we doing? To ensure that as executive, that those that are coming into the workplace are job ready. Remember, most of us complain that our graduates, our graduates in the workplace, they don't, they don't live up to expectation. So how do we ensure that we give them the right skill at onboarding and at uh, orientation and when they even settle into their, into their various departments where work begins? So we need to have what we call collaborative way of driving results, results. Your people are made to develop to to to, 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 to deliver results. How do you now drive them to get that result? It is collaborative way of getting things done. So in conclusion, in conclusion, in conclusion, what do we do? Remember this. First impression is a lasting impression. Remember what we always talk about with the one minute elevator or the opportunity. You meet somebody in the elevator. And the person say, tell me about yourself. That could be that your angel. That could be that your destiny helper. How do you manage that? You may consider yourself as an executive, but you may not be an executive here, but on the way to being an executive. And that person you met in the, in the elevator will be the person that will catapult you to there. So what do we say? Be ready. Be prepared like the scout. One minute of little opportunity. Tell me about yourself. Can I meet you? You may not have a second opportunity to change that impression. So what do we do? Let's start thinking on our feet as executive and we'll get there. So I ask a question, type in the in the chat box. Chat box. Are you wired to connect now? Are you wired to connect now? Connect with people? connect with people uh, with with uh, with our employees with the people in the boardroom those who were like yes a light a light day yes inua thank you yes 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 wired to connect look at the wire on that man's head it's not a nairamalio this one is not nairamali but when you look at the edge of his hair what we used to have in those days before wireless became uh, uh something uh, that we used to work with now it was that thing that we put at the back of a computer line one or something or line one or something that we put and we start connecting with internet in those days so be ready to connect be ready be wired let your dna be wired so what do we need to do be kind for everyone you meet is carrying a heavy load that is plateau so in conclusion, are you ready to sink because you are not willing to move on? Are you going to swim and ride the tides? Then you set yourself up for success. For the organization should not collapse. And we should also be ready, set ourselves up for success. Because with the certificate that we are going to get, please be prepared. Whether you are an executive up there or you are on your way 
to being an executive. But the race is won by those who are prepared. And the best way to prepare, predict the future is to invest in it. And that is why we are here. This laurel, this cup is meant for those who set themselves up for success. And that is why we decided to use the one and a half hours or two to get to where we want to be. And that is about executive presence. Remember, there is no shortcut to it. There is the willingness, willingness, willingness and willingness alone. Very ready from tonight. Willingness and willingness alone, we take us there. Thank you for listening. And let me check my time if we are not too tired. Oh, it's after 10. I think that's good for us tonight. Can you please type your questions and we take them tomorrow morning. Thank you for listening. Thank you. That's my mail, Gmail and my phone number with my name as the, the email. So please, let's take your questions tomorrow because I know some of us are tired. We went to work and we some of us are even listening in their cars now. They're still on their way home. It's really those who are in Lagos. It rained and I'm sure we are going to get there. Thank you so much. We appreciate you. We really do appreciate you that you have confidence in us and that is why you want to be part of the great family of CIHRM. Thank you and God bless us all. So, Madam Tessie, are you there? Yes, I'm here. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much for that insightful lecture. Uh, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, Thank you also for your time uh, to